Advertising is the art of convincing people to spend money they don't have for something they don't need. Will Rogers. Welcome to Retirement Ship, your mentor to and through retirement. I'm your host, from Lindy, Certified Financial Planner. Saving money is important for all of us. No matter what stage of life in, it is important to save money. For those in retirement, saving money will help their retirement income go further, especially if they're saving it on spending that isn't really important to them. For those saving for retirement, saving money allows us to put more into retirement or, more importantly, into the things that are important to us. So at no stage in life is saving money not important. In order to save money, we need to reduce spending. We need to spend less so that we can save more. And I believe that one of the best ways for us to save money, to reduce our spending, is to avoid ads. That's right, avoid ads. Why? Because ads work. We'll get into it more here in the podcast, but in this two-minute tune-in, I want to quickly run through the five ways that we're going to avoid ads and therefore save money. And of course, we will get into how these things help you save more money, especially for the ones that cost something. So the five ways are to stream ad-free TV. Number two, to use Do Not Track with social media. Number three, to unsubscribe from all marketing emails. Number four, to use an email app. And number five, to use reader mode for website articles. All that's coming up in this episode of the Retirement Ship Podcast. Save money, avoid ads. As many of us go into the new year, we will have financial resolutions or hopefully financial vision, targets, and goals for how we want to improve our finances this year. It's a good time to be settling in and doing better than we maybe have in the past. And for most of us, that will include some version of saving more money, whether it's literally saving more money into our bank account to save that emergency fund that we've never had, or freeing up cash to save money for retirement, or spending less in retirement to make it go further. Many of us will want to save more money. One of the best ways to do this is to avoid ads. Now, why? Why is this the best way to save money? Well, here's why. Ads work. Ads work. There's a reason so many businesses run off advertising. They work. Television, internet sites, magazines, all full of ads that companies pay billions of dollars a year for because they work. They get people to buy. There are countless businesses and services that run on the internet that don't cost the end consumer anything because they are fully ad supported. And the reason so many companies are willing to pay so much in advertising dollars to support these sites is because they get results. They advertise on these sites, people buy, they make more money than they paid in the advertising, and they continue to do it. Ads work. They get you to buy things you didn't know you needed. Will Rogers was almost spot on in this famous quotation, but he was missing one thing. Advertising is the art and science of convincing people to buy. Specifically, things that they didn't even know they wanted. There is a science to it, and businesses have figured it out. It's highly effective. If you want to avoid spending money on junk we don't even need, We need to avoid the ads. If you did any of the goal setting and vision setting and target setting in the couple episodes in the Victoria Cycle series there, then you have already identified what are your top priorities for the year and for maybe even just this quarter. And many of those things will not include buying garbage that you see in advertisements. So if you really want to live up to your highest priority, one of the best ways to do that is to just simply avoid the advertisements altogether. And that's my challenge to you is to avoid ads and you will indirectly see a huge savings in money. Plus, who really likes to see ads anyways? Many of us are not lining up to view advertisements for companies and what they're trying to sell us. And so in addition to saving money, it saves us a lot of time and frustration. So let's dive into five ways that you can avoid ads and therefore save money. Number one, avoid ads by streaming ad-free TV. Stream ad-free TV. 
stop watching live TV. Just, just stop. Obviously, there may be a couple of exceptions for live sports or those types of things, but for the most part, stop watching live TV. Stop settling for the ad-supported version of streaming TV. Instead, subscribe to the plus versions of different streaming services so you can avoid the ads. Literally, you are paying to avoid ads. If you aren't familiar with this at all, there are many streaming sites out there that will stream all the content that you see online, but without ads. I don't know that there's anything that plays on regular television today that isn't available to stream online. For a little extra money, you can stream that with no ads at all. And if you're able to do that, you will save far more in dollars when you aren't buying all of what is advertised to you than you spend on the sites themselves. Obviously, we know of streaming sites that are always ad-free, like Netflix and Disney, but there are many other sites that are ad-supported unless you buy the premium version. So, for example, Hulu has many shows, a lot of which are live and going right now, and you can also, though, upgrade that for about 5 bucks more a month to the ad-free version. Even YouTube, if you watch a lot of YouTube, you can get YouTube Premium, which gets rid of all the ads that you see before, in the middle, and at the end of videos, and see absolutely none of them. HBO Max and other networks, streaming services like Peacock, Paramount Plus, Discovery Plus, etc., all of them have an ad-free version. They're usually about five to six bucks more per month, but then you see no ads at all. Now, of course, subscribing to every streaming service out there can get quite expensive. I always think it's funny how many people complain about all these new streaming services that come out. And they're like, do you expect me to subscribe to another one? When it wasn't that long ago that people were regularly paying $100, $150, $200 a month for cable, which included all of these advertisements. And now for 15, 20, 25 total, you can have access to multiple sites with no ads at all to watch whatever you want. And you can save even more money by rotating your streaming services. I particularly like to subscribe to them using my Apple ID, which allows me to easily subscribe and then immediately unsubscribe from those sites so that it doesn't automatically renew. I can then use it for the full 30 days or month or whatever the subscription is for. And then when it comes up, it just doesn't charge me again. That way I'm in control of when I'm spending the money and for what. Now, why do we have you do this? Uh, Number one, you will save money save money by paying for the ad-free streaming services. And you will save money by avoiding ads. You'll do this by, you know, keeping your used vehicle longer because you're not constantly seeing new car commercials. The reason there's so many new car commercials, especially at the end of the year, is because it works. People become dissatisfied with the vehicles that we have and we go out and we buy new ones. Maybe even not a new one that we see in a commercial, but it makes us buy a newer one than we have. If we can avoid all these car commercials, we'll keep our used cars longer, therefore saving thousands of dollars in car purchases over our lifetime. If you kept your car for even one year longer on average, you'll reduce the total number of car purchases that you make by one or two or seven, depending on how often you buy a car. And obviously that stacks up to thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in savings. And that easily justifies spending a few extra bucks per month to not see those advertisements. You'll keep your technology longer by avoiding ads for new phones and laptops and gear that make you want the latest and greatest. If you don't know they exist, you won't want them and you'll actually be content with what you already have instead of always wanting more. You avoid the purchase of knickknacks and junk that you'll never use again. One of my, one of my favorite single uh, cell comics of all time is a picture of a old man and his adult son standing in front of a garage and the garage door is open and it is just full of garbage just junk everywhere just packed to the brim and the old man's got his arm around his son and he said son just think someday all of this will be yours And that's just it, right? We already have way more junk than we need. We we rent and pay money for storage places to store all the junk that we don't even use. And we got all of that junk because it was advertised to us. Almost none of those things are things that we would go out and actively look for. They're things that are advertised to us. It makes us want them and we buy. And so you'll avoid purchasing a lot of junk if you just 
never see the advertisements for them. And and the amount of money that you calculate saving that, it obviously depends on the person, but it's quite a lot. And you'll avoid seeing all those commercials for restaurants and food that really just makes your mouth water and go out and want to eat out and you'll eat at home more often and be happy with it because you're not presented with another option so often. And so you'll save money and not to mention probably a few pounds of body fat too by not going out to eat as often. Obviously, there are many, many more ways like this that you will be saving real money by avoiding the ads and TV. And we haven't even started talking about the time savings. You'll save time. Think about this. Every hour of traditional TV programming includes about 17 minutes of commercials. And that's what we're talking about avoiding, right? But with introductions and end credits and the previously on sections at the beginning of episodes, a typical 60-minute program might only have 35 to 40 minutes of actual content. You'll save one-third of your entertainment time by not watching the commercials. You'll still get all the entertainment. You'll just save a third of your time. Let's say that you like to watch two episodes of your favorite show in an evening to wind down uh, six nights a week or 12 hours of traditional TV programming. Or you could watch the same amount of actual programming and only eight hours of ad free time. You will save four hours per week and save over 208 hours per year. That's over eight days saved. If you make $20 an hour, you could work an extra four hours and make over $4,000 more per year. Even a student making eight bucks an hour is better off working a bit more and saving the time watching ads. This more than pays for any of the subscription free fees to get the ad free version. There's a direct correlation between how much money you make and how much TV you watch, and it's an inverse correlation, meaning that those who watch more TV make less money. So, even if you're one of the people that think, oh, two hours a day, 12 hours a week, I don't watch that much TV, I watch maybe three total. Well, you probably also make more money. And if you make more money, the time savings is worth more as well. You can do it for your own amount of TV watching and your own uh, hourly pay. But no matter what, you're going to find out that you are better off working more and watching less ads just from a pure uh, dollars per hour value. And so almost everyone should be paying for ad-free versions to watch the TV they want to watch. And obviously, you could save a bunch by not watching any TV, but for many people, uh, we do like to watch at least a little bit. And so this is a way to save a lot of money while doing it. So again, stream ad-free TV to save money. Number two is to use the do not track feature with social media. The easier solution, of course, would be to give up social media. I mostly did uh, many years ago. Don't miss it much. I still have a limited social media presence. This one, I occasionally need to jump on there and uh, check something out. But it's not something that I regularly scroll through because I hate it. And so that would be the easier way to avoid all the ads and social media is to just give it up. But most of you, uh, most people won't. And for everyone who will want to continue using it, you just got to realize that Facebook, Instagram, and the rest are prime targets for ads. Facebook's mission is not to connect the world, as it says. Its mission is to sell ads. It takes your data and sells it ads to companies who then advertise directly to you. And it works. It's one of the best ways to advertise. Because with all that data that you share so freely on social media, they have a profile on you. So they can target ads specifically to you. These ads increase your chances of buying more than regular TV ads or advertisements on sites. And they can track you across multiple sites so they continue to show you the same ads over and over again until you buy. Go watch the film The Social Dilemma if you don't believe me. This is not, of course, an episode about social media, but just if you're not going to give it up, then there are settings on Facebook and Google and other programs and platforms that reduce the tracking that is done on you. And you know, anytime you do that, you can go on there and say, do not track or, you know, stop. They're just, they are different for every site and you have to look it up separately to figure out how to do it. And it's not that difficult though. And when you do that, they'll often, you know, object and say, are you sure you want to do this? Because if you do it, you know, it's going to result in a poor experience. 
And I think Google said even something like, you will still see just as many ads, but they won't be relevant to you. Exactly. That's the point. You may not be able to reduce the amount of ads you see on social media, as many of these platforms don't give you an option of just paying to remove the ads like you can with streaming services. You will still see just as many ads, but we want them to be not relevant to us. When they're not relevant to us, we don't fall for them. We don't buy them. We don't care, right? If I see a, a commercial for, for lipstick, it doesn't affect me. If I see a commercial for, for women's clothing, I don't care. I just you know, wait for it to be over. It doesn't target me because I'm not a purchaser of these items. And so I want to see, if I have to see any ads, I want them to be about things that I would literally never buy. And if you can change your settings so that they're not tracking you, so they're not targeting you, then you will still see a bunch of ads. It'll be for stuff that is annoying that you don't care about. And that's the point because you won't buy it. If you're going to see ads, they should be about things that you care less about. When we don't care, we don't buy and we save money. Number three is to unsubscribe from all marketing emails. I am an unsubscribe warrior. Every email I get that has an unsubscribe button, I smash it. And I never get an email from them again. Every single time. Anytime I get any emails that have an unsubscribe button, smash that button. Email marketing works better than Facebook advertising in many industries. And because they can, once they get it, they can send you an email and send it again and again and again. And most of the time you don't buy most of them don't work, but they're also almost free to send. And so they can send out thousands and millions and trillions of these emails and eventually people buy. And, and most of the time you don't buy it, but sometimes you do. And you only bought it because it shows you something you didn't know you wanted five seconds before you saw it, but then you saw it and it made you want it and you bought it. You spent money. And so the easiest way to do this is to avoid, one, getting on these chains in the first place, avoid giving out your email so much, but two, even if you have to, to get something, just immediately unsubscribe from all marketing emails. Unsubscribe from all marketing emails, don't see the ads, save the money from the things that's trying to sell you. So just unsubscribe, except from emails you get from me. Obviously, obviously stay subscribed uh, to those. I don't do any emails right now, but if I ever do, keep those subscriptions. Everything else, unsubscribe. Number four is to use an email app. This is a short one, uh, but I've always used Apple Mail or Microsoft Outlook for my email, uh, for personal and work. And I had to log in to Gmail once, um, not long ago, and I was just shocked by how many ads there are. And I have a Yahoo account for my junk mail, obviously, and it, that was even worse. I had to log into there once, and the amount of ads they show you while you're trying to just check your email is insane. And all that can be avoided, by simply using an email app like Apple Mail or Outlook or a host of others that you can get on the various app stores. And just getting those, again, a little bit of setup up front, but you, when you get those connected, it's a better email experience and then you don't see any ads at all. So you can avoid all those ads if you use Gmail or Yahoo or any of these ones and, you, and you're the type of person who is signing in to them directly on a web browser, it takes a little bit of time to set it up in an app and you can avoid all of those ads. Again, and those will all be hyper-targeted to you because they're in your inbox. They're tracking you all the time. Uh, so you can avoid those targeted emails by using an email app. And last, but certainly not least, use reader mode for websites. Use reader mode for websites. Uh, Apple Safari has a built-in reader mode and it eliminates all ads on any article you're reading. I think Google Chrome has one too. You might have to download it or activate it. Uh, and a lot of other browsers I'm sure do. I just, as far as what I use, and it's just built right in, which is really nice. And you just activate that and all the ads are gone. You know, And I think gone are the days of, of pop-up ads. Uh, you know where you used to get those all the time and they'd pop up and be so annoying. But it's a really bad experience, right? Everybody hates them. And so Google, a while ago, uh, you would track all this stuff and it doesn't like those sites. And so when you Google things, it, if, if sites have pop-up ads, Google won't bring them to the first page unless it's a very weird search because uh, it's bad user experience. So, so gone are the days of pop-up ads, and so the pop-up blocker is no longer as useful. Now the ads are in the content, right? They're, as you scroll through you know, and you're trying to do a recipe or read some article or something, there's like an like a, 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 a advertisement every second paragraph. And it's obnoxious. There's so many on the sides. They're everywhere. And all that can just be eliminated by clicking that reader mode function. 
And again, because all these sites are tracking you, Google's tracking you, Facebook's tracking you, all these different advertising sites are tracking you across all these sites. They can keep showing you ads for things they think you will buy and they do it because it works. And so you can avoid all those ads for any other sites by activating those reader modes. So eliminate the ads and you eliminate the desire to buy and you save money. A little bit of work on the front end for some of these things will save you a lot of time and a lot of money on the back end. And then you can put that money to better uses, to your true goals, to your true vision, to what you want most out of life, whether it be saving for retirement, saving in retirement, saving for your family, spending it more on experiences, whatever is important to you, that's what you should be spending your money on. Not on things you didn't realize you wanted until a moment ago. Save money by avoiding ads. That's it for today. We're going to do one more Save Money episode next week, so stay tuned to that for just a couple extra ways to save money in this new year, and we'll see you next time on the Retirement Trip Podcast. This podcast is educational only and is not intended to be investment, legal, or tax advice or recommendations, whether direct or incidental. Again, this is not investment advice. Consult your financial, tax, and legal professionals for specific advice related to your specific situation. Never take investment advice from someone who doesn't know you and your specific situation. All opinions expressed in this podcast are the opinions of the speakers expressing them. All performance reference is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. Retirement mentorship is not affiliated with or controlled by any registered investment advisor, broker-dealer, or other financial services company.